Hello guys, it's me again, and I am sitting in my office, and you can see only the clean part. But I'm pretty sure sooner or later the camera is going to be rebellious and back up. I'm here tonight to do a follow-up on the Dragons episode. Uh, tonight in a chat room that I was in, uh, the subject of Dragons came up, and uh, people are talking about how intelligent they are, and they were talking about how they were trans-dimensional. And so, being as I've seen a few dragons, uh, I thought I would say something, because, you know, I actually had something that I could participate into the conversation. Shaka. So I said, basically, well, I've seen a few dragons, and I don't know about them being transdimensional, but I can tell you that they're non-corporeal. And, you know, then someone was telling me about how I, I'm a dragon rider, and how they come to me, you know, uh... I, I don't know that, to be honest, and I'm, I'm very flattered that they would attribute that to me, but it's not like I'm a fairy princess or anything. But, um, I got me on the, the mental thing of dragons, and I'm, I'm thinking, hey guys, you know, what do y'all think of this? I'm thinking about, uh, every day going out and seeing if I can call the dragons, I don't know if I can or not, if I can call the dragons and see if they'll actually con consent to letting me take their photos. There is a wonderful person I met uh, two days ago, and she does that with orbs. She can actually call them. She so showed me a lot of her photos. They're amazing. Uh, some of them probably could have been water droplets, but then there are the others. And there's the streaks of light, and there's the fairy. And it's like, no, no, they aren't all water. <laughs> Um, and she's talking about how she's been doing it for years and she's got to the point where she can pretty much summon them to get their photos. And I'm like, I think I'll try that with dragons. Because I gotta tell you, I've been trying to take pictures of orbs since she talked to me about it. <laughs> and I ain't got no pictures of orbs. I, I think maybe me going, here orb, here orb, here orb is not working. But here are my thoughts on dragons as a cultural entity species. They are definitely intelligent. I don't know the degree of their intelligence. There are people out there that would say they far, 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 far surpass us. I can't say that. Whales are sentient. Elephants are sentient. Dolphins are sentient. And it isn't that they surpass us so much as they just think differently. But the few times that I met with the dragons, or didn't meet, came across, stumbled upon them, or rather they stumbled upon me, I was met with this feeling of outright curiosity, except that one that was just flat out being nosy. He was just flat out being nosy. You cannot tell me, oh, the nosy dragon. <laughs> nosy! And they were all kind of teenagerish, so unless, unless all dragons just seem young to us, um, forever and ever, no matter how old they are, at least at that age that these were, they're a curious species. Uh, they're definitely non-corporeal, um, but that doesn't mean they can't manifest, manifest to the naked eye. Uh, these sky dragons, and I saw two, there's a second one I didn't talk to you about, and it's because I've, I actually kind of doubt that one, although, well, there's a third one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's two there's two encounters that I did not put into that story. They actually clothe themselves in clouds. Like they there is an old saying from from biblical scripture and other ancient texts that the the fallen angels and other non-corporeal beings clothed themselves in human flesh. This is the phrase that was translated out. Well, the dragons clothed themselves in clouds so that they could be seen. They most certainly could have seen us without the clouds. And they were I don't know if they were doing it just so we could see them. I highly doubt it. I think there's something else going there that I, there's just not enough information to figure out what it was. But that's what those dragons did. And the one, the, the nosy son of a bitch in my dining room... <laughs> He was visible to the naked eye, but to see him with my naked eyes was like seeing him with an overactive imagination. It wasn't like you see me on the screen. It was like seeing him behind your eyes, which is what it's like when you see something that's non-corporeal, but you can see it with your eyes. You, it's like you're registering it behind your eyes. 
And my theory upon that is because eyes are actually just gathering information for your brain to process, your eyes can actually see this level. You know, people can see different spectrums of color, believe it or not. Like, I have a 100% uh, spectrum visibility of color. Men statistically do not have as much of a spectrum as women, although, guys, don't get upset. Sometimes men have more of a spectrum view than women. It really, it's not, it, it, it may or may not be genetic. Yeah, it, it probably is to some point, but it's not, well, I'm, I'm Irish, so therefore I'm going to have it. It's more like, well, my mother had the ability to see 100% color, therefore I could see 100% color. Chances are really high the world over that human beings also have the ability to see certain non-corporeal spectrum, spectrums as a result, which is why some people can see, can see dead people. <laughs> can see dead people. And uh, some people, like me, normally cannot. And the dragon in my dining room, um, winking out of sight and being invisible was a conscious choice for him. And what that means, guys, if you consider it, is that his type of dragon, at least, don't know about the cloud dragons because they had to clothe themselves in clouds to be seen. His kind of dragon, and he was a different shape than the cloud dragons as well, um, have to consciously choose to be invisible to in the non-corporeal um, spectrum. Or when he winked out, it could be that he winked out to another pocket side layer of the universe because, uh, you know, there are people that say they're transdimensional, but I, I wouldn't know about that. Or it could be both. I don't know. Sucker didn't exactly talk to me, a rude sucker. He could have at least said, hello, my name is Joe. And the conversation you were having with your, with your uh, friend was just so very intriguing, and, 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 you know, you don't really hear people talking about things like that over here in Bayonne, New Jersey, so I thought, you know, I would just pop by and eavesdrop for a while. Yeah, whenever you analyze the, uh, the events, these are the, this is the information you can pick up pretty readily. They do have two arms and two legs. Uh, the sky dragons really do look a lot like, uh, how... China and other Oriental kingdoms, and actually some areas in South America and over on this continent too, um, depict them. Uh, the dragon in my dining room was about the size of a van, maybe a little bigger, if you don't count his tail, um, size of a van maybe, and he looked like your typical dragon that you see on TV, except for his weird odd coloring. But they did seem very intelligent, but I am not going to say that they are more intelligent than us or dumber than us. Uh, that's, that's just poppycock to go thinking like that just because something's different. Because, you know, that's like everybody, well, dolphins are dumb. Dolphins are dumb because they don't, hands, they don't have hands. See, that's what you're doing there. You're looking at a dolphin, and because that dolphin is not non-corporeal, you've decided it's stupid. And so then a dragon comes along, and because he's non-corporeal, you've decided he's more intelligent than you. It's really, really silly, guys. All you need to know is dolphins are sentient. Dragons appear to be sentient. They, they seem pretty sentient. So now I'm going to tell you about the last two events that I did not tell in my other video. And I didn't tell it because I, I didn't remember offhand. I don't normally think of these. Uh, the first one, I was driving in the car with my daughter. I forget where we were uh, leaving, but... Up ahead of me in the road, a sky dragon parted the clouds. You could actually see the clouds roll back, and he was like this. And he looked at us, and I pointed to my daughter, and I said, Look, there's a dragon in the sky. And she said, Oh, my God, at first. But then, you know, she, uh, she has rejected a lot of things that uh, she grew up around. Like, for example, she and her brother had gotten this really excellent photograph of a ghost in St. Augustine. You can even see the gentleman's hair like the style, hairstyle, like it was just that clear. We probably could have identified who he was, except that she deleted the photograph, or rather she and her brother did. And uh, there was this one night she told me about it. She was so upset because while I was sleeping and she was staying up to do her, her homework, the house was filled with sounds and people walking back and forth and, and ghosts that she said they were ghosts. And she said that she finally had enough and told them to shut up because she was trying to do her homework. And she was so adamant about it. And then, you know, when she really started to reject things, um, she denied that ever happened. The reason why I bring up these sad things is because when it comes to the event with the dragon in the car, 
there's going to be no getting her to admit that it happened, and she probably doesn't believe it happened. And who knows? Maybe it was just the cloud formation. They do do that sometimes. So I don't, you know, that particular event, eh, you know. But the the other event's a really big one, and I call it the Dragon Wedding. I'm going to tell you a full-fledged story. <sighs> this event happened outside of Jacksonville, Florida, to the south in a little place called Ocean Way. And there was a woman that I was fond of for friendship that, uh, um, let's just say she and I aren't friends anymore because there's only so much drama a person can take in their lives. I just don't hang around you if you're going to start the drama and then say that I'm the drama queen, okay? And after 20-something years of getting told I'm the drama queen, I've learned to do this to anybody who even begins, okay? So anyway... Let's call her Susan. So Susan and I were friends, and Susan had her coven, and I had my group. So we, you know, I never could join Susan's coven because that's a conflict of interests. But I went over to her house one time with my roommate, uh, Choshu. Choshu may or may not remember this. She may or may not be watching this video. I don't remember what we were there for. I think it was Susan's birthday. And Susan lived in a little trailer park where the trailers are around a little cul-de-sac. And it was a nice evening, and I cannot remember why we walked outside of, of the trailer to stand outside. But everybody in the cul-de-sac watched this happen. And I'm going to reveal a little bit about myself because that's sadly part of the story. But hear me out, and you'll get to hear what I think of that. <laughs> because that's what this is, is the white commentaries. So we're standing out there and we're looking at the sky because, oh, what a beautiful evening, you know. And Susan's like, there's dragons up there. And we're looking and what we witnessed, and uh, the only image I have left in my mind is the end of this and some scattered bits. But we watched as a crowd of sky dragons were clothed in clouds and they came together and we watched as one dragon and another dragon basically walked down an aisle. Honest to God, they were lined up like they were witnessing a wedding. And there was another dragon at the end of the aisle, and he had a little podium. We actually watched the podium come up out of the clouds and form as these two dragons walked up to it. And they stood there, and we watched basically the... Uh, the ceremony, which lasted I don't know how long, but it was so beautiful watching these dragons, and, and they were so motionless, you know. I'm sure to them it wasn't because they're clothed in clouds, so if they're moving around, well, their cloth is just like, probably like, you know, why is Bob looking retarded today? Oh, he hasn't bothered to fix his cloud. They stood there and stood there, and then I realized that all the heads is turned, and they're all looking down at us, and with Everybody there, looking up, I realized what was going on. They were waiting for, my, for somebody's blessing, and I guessed maybe mine, <laughs> because of what I do in the cosmos. Um, so I said, I give you my blessing. Have a happy life. And I look back on that, and I'm slightly embarrassed. Oh, my gosh, how self-centered of me to make that assumption. However... Um, I don't know, maybe egotistical. I think egotistical is the proper word. It was very, but once I gave the blessing, um, they all turned, and then we watched as honest to gosh, a four-level uh, sailing ship, uh, not a schooner, which is the only type of sailing ship in my head all of a sudden, but it was like four levels. levels. You could see like portholes and... And and the ridges from where you know how in a in a boat this like a double decker boat there's like a, a trim red lid, ledge you can see the trim ledge you can see the bow and they all poured into this ship and then it sailed off I kid you not and now this is cloud imagery we're seeing but that's the story that we were shown via clouds in the sky and then it was over and everybody just kind of looked at each other like whatever. And they went about their business, and I think I was the only one that noted what a momentous event it was that we had been allowed to witness. Now, there's the chance that it was a group abduction, because 
if you don't know what screen memories are, screen memories are when you're abducted, and let's say that they they rip out all of my teeth so they can investigate the roots of my teeth, and then they put my teeth back in. But they don't want me to remember that for whatever reason. They claim it's a kindness, but since we still get PTSD, whether we remember or not, I'm not sure how kind it is. I think it's just kinder not to do it at all or to use non-invasive technology, which you know they've got. I mean, fucking duh. They've got the ability to travel through time. They have non-invasive technology, duh. Okay? <laughs> Doesn't take rocket science to figure that one out. So they'll replace your memory. And they'll replace your memory of having your teeth pulled with something pleasant. Like a lot of people talk about how they're given a book and told to read the book to a crowd of happy aliens that are waiting on you to give a sermon. And then with that memory, then they implant another memory over it to screen and protect. And it's usually something innocuous like walking down a road or possibly in my case, staring at the sky to witness a dragon wedding that stood still until such a time as I gave it my blessing and said, have a good life and watch them sail away. However, considering the other times I witnessed dragons and the way the clouds materialized, there's also a really good chance that it truly was a dragon wedding. I'm sure you can imagine how fantastical the story is. When I was talking about the dragons in the last episode, I was Really, really not sure I should share the story, but it's on my mind, and it's something neat to talk about. And now this thing's over 20 minutes, and I'm not sure I'm going to edit out all the ums and ahs and the time I went like that. But, yeah. I think I'm probably going to start trying to photograph the dragons, guys. Wish me luck. Uh, if anybody else knows of any photos or anything like that, I would love to see them.